the ultimate revenge. You know, on 4chan, one of the thing, one of the things that people will say is, "Hey, I hate this fucker. I want to kill him in Minecraft." In Minecraft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> in Minecraft, so the FBI doesn't start looking into your tweets. Well, the other thing too is that they also technically can't because they only have evidence that you said something in Minecraft. Exactly. That's why they say. It. Yeah, it's kind of like when you go on like drug forums. It's like, yeah, all the police know what you actually mean, but if you type in "swim," which means someone who someone isn't me, who isn't me. Yeah. Yeah. Or what they'll also say is, um, I wouldn't say, "Oh, I took mescaline." It would be, "You see, my pet rabbit took mescaline, and what he told me was this." <laughs> you, and we'll get totally ridiculous and self-aware about it. It's just because we worded it that way, it clears us of anything. Even if it's some fucked up story about how your pet iguana is telling you what shrooms is like. That's hilarious. It's just a hilarious way to get around the law. Dickishly. So you didn't technically admit to anything. That has the... is like... That has a similar effect to, to asking for a friend. <laughs> when you're looking for something kind of uh, on the internet. Right. Oh, Maria. It's like, friggin, I'm asking about hot spots to score weed or something. Asking for a friend, obviously. Shift the eyes. I mean, like, it's almost kind of funny how blunt you can be about it now, because I was in my... When I did Uber, and I wanted some, I would wait until I got a pass. It was a college town, so you would get one very frequently. Mm. You'd wait till you smelled it on them, and they'd be like, hey, um, you a stoner? It's like, oh yeah, I just had some. It's like, you have a dealer? It's like, yeah, do you have Snapchat? I'm like, yeah, I do. It's like, here he is. You're welcome, man. <laughs> I love that there thing. he is! I, yo, you got the plug. <laughs> the, like, the weirdest Uber drive I ever had, I didn't find this out until later, um, but apparently this dude was like, like a senior high schooler? Or something. He was young, like not like young, young. I thought he was just a young college kid, but he alluded to the to something about that. But there was something the way he was talking and stuff that he was intriguing and in that he was involved. He appeared to be involved in stuff. I don't remember his name, where he went, where to go, or anything. So there's nothing to look up or no one to look for. But um, like he was legit. He did. He dealt with like real stuff. Like real stuff like you could get some seriously illegal stuff from him and I, he gave me a description of what his boss was like and it sounded like a guy I would not want to fuck with just from not the description of him being a tough guy but because the number one thing that they describe about him is something that I would recognize as something of a bling culture is like he he's the sort of person who would wear a nice suit and has like a fully like decked out customed out like murdered out uh, Cadillac. And it was Whoa. like, the money that he would need to procure all of this is a flex in and of itself. The fact that he portrays himself as a gentleman person dealing with drugs, however, is like, a bit unnerving. Tad. You're telling me this is a, this is a professional here. Yeah, this is, well, this is not like, um, like, say, a gang-based drug dealer, which is, you know, they're just more, up, more upfront nah. and honest. Um, this is more like, um, like this is a man who will bury you by the docks if you disrespect him, kind of so thing. So this is so this is a mafia drug dealer, is what you're understanding. <laughs> he, he comes off as having the appearance of that, yeah. Well, that's not terrifying at all. Also, this kid had a lot of money. He gave me a hundred dollar tip just because he felt he felt like it. Cool, thanks. Hey, can I uh, can I start giving you rides like every day now? <laughs> right, and he was in the middle of fuck all nowhere, Texas, too. Jeez. Like, so in the middle of nowhere, I don't even remember where it is. Wow. Ooh, yes. Yeah, he helped me out that night. I'm gonna go tip, thank you. I bet. Oddly enough, the, well, the most interesting, the other most interesting conversation I had Ubering was from a sugar baby. That's Alrighty, a story then. probably worth hearing. Well, uh, well, for the reason that it was like one of those like, obviously she was she consented to what she was doing, and obviously the guy was willing to pay, so he doesn't mind. But we had a, a like a really deep kind of Ow. semi-emotional comfort of strangers discussion because she was also really emotionally smart, which I'm not surprised by at all. Because some of the people who are like into 
stuff like this, they tend to know they're, they tend to have pretty high emotional intelligence to be able to do it. Pretty Makes emotionally sense. savvy. So, we actually have like a really cool and very and semi deep discussion. I love it when you have that with a stranger. Um, while dropping her off to her place, I also made a hundred bucks for the trip because of the distance. Getting a little wisdom from strangers is a good feeling. <laughs> no, like my favorite conversation, or one of the, my favorite conversations oh. I ever had was oh, I was yeah, on a I flight. I was on a jet blue flight uh, yeah, after yeah, visiting yeah. my family, and. A guy's sitting next to me, and we just get into this conversation, and it's like a deep, hyper philosophical, spiritual, like in depth conversation where we like really understand each other. And what I loved about him most was actually a really subtle thing. It was um, he was about to ask for my name and my phone number, and maybe my phone number, and he's like, "Wait, it doesn't work that way. Never mind." And I'm like, "Oh my god, he he gets it. He gets the unwritten rule, which is." Um, we talked about the idea that when you're traveling on like air, airliners or at like highway rest stops, you're technically in a crossroads where anything. Can ah, damn it! And mm -hmm. there was this rough understanding. It's an unwritten rule that says what you find here should remain here. And I know that he got that because he stopped and then said, "No, I shouldn't do that. That's not right." And I'm just like, I get the feeling. I think you're right. There was something about that moment that is like, "Oh my god, we were totally in sync, and we don't, and we don't even know each other." And I love that. Yeah. That's it's cool. It's something that should live on in your memory only. There shouldn't be physical evidence as a reminder of something that you picked up in a situation like that. Yeah, because the moment loses its magic if you get to know the person. Because part of the mystique is like, this is a stranger, you somehow hit it off, but maybe that's all you have in it, so... Rather than disappoint it, just, uh, just leave. What you found here should stay here. Like Vegas, almost. <laughs> Kind of. Like, you're allowed to take something back with you, which is to say, I got the conversation out of it, and I'm allowed to take mm -hmm. that with me. You're taking but the as, knowledge back with you. But as for him, no. That would break the unwritten rule. What you find here must remain here. You all, there's such interesting conversation with you, Peter. I like Thank you. Him. He's Peter, yeah, no, he's, the, yeah, that, that's <laughs> what's fun about him. The P Ooh. stands for philosophical. Yes, it's just it's, it's just also what my cutie mark is. <gasps> Although I found I out, I almost walked into a ravine. That would have been bad. You found I found out, out through one of my grimoires. Um, my cutie mark doesn't just have a philosophical connotation, and apparently an occult one because the golden ratio has meaning there. There's also an occult meaning that implies it as a form of Greek Gnostic sex magic. That's let me so break down. Makes so much sense, it's scary. Well, let me put it to you like this: in uh, Gnosticism, which is like, you might say, it's it's like advanced Christianity, but the creation story is weird in that there's a preliminary part to Genesis that involves and <coughs> that involves Aeon Sophia, who is the Aeon of Wisdom. Uh, uh, and um, so, for instance, to be a philosopher could mean two things. If you're like the Plato-Aristotle kind, where it was like, you are a lover of wisdom, philosophy, what it means. What or Philosophy could be translated to a form of Greek sex magic, or Greek Gnostic sex magic, called philosopher, lover of, not wisdom, but lover of Sophia. Well, that makes sense, because Philo That's the Sophia. shit that Diogenes was on, huh? <laughs> Behold a man! <laughs> well, that's, that's also why, uh, when you meet Aeon's master, this part doesn't spoil anything, her name is Sophia. Or, dark, or I also refer to her as Dark Sophia. See, the answer is probably yes. Mm -hmm. Because the, by the very implication of a dark, there has to be a light. So I'm just going to ask, is there a fucking light, Sophia? Well, Sophia is technically already of the light. She's part of something called the Pleroma. Yeah. Um, but the thing about that is, is that it puts a... It sort of tips on the head the original Judeo-Christian notions of good and evil, because um, whether or not so, there's uh, the good that appears as good, and the good that appears as evil, the evil that appears as good, and etc. So, what you actually mm -hmm. find is that in Gnosticism, some demons are, and angels actually sort of have weird alternate alignments, which is to say, some angels are actually the evil that appears as good. Um, 
In fact, in Gnosticism, pretty much all of them are, because it teaches that Jehovah is actually a false god and evil, so his creations are not much better. Um, however, some angels are genuinely Aeon, can be Aeons. Like, for instance, Jesus is still a cool guy. He's just known as Aeon Christ. Hmm. Or the Master Yeshua. See, that's interesting. Yeah, and but I only heard him called that in Gnosticism or in Gnostic ritual. Because um, if you look at how Jesus... Apparently, according to mages who study the Greek tradition, he actually did fit the classical training of a Hellenic Greek mage, probably with Jewish flavoring, because a lot of magic systems allow you to impose other pantheons upon them sometimes. Um, because And he would have achieved a rank known as... In Greece, the rank he would have had would have been called Ennead. But technically, when he died on the cross, from an occult perspective, he became a Magus because he uttered a Logos. Yeah. Which, despite what Christianity will tell you, anyone can actually give a word or or what we call it, aeonic word or logos. It's just very, very fucking difficult to do that. Ah. Like, only a handful of people in history have become like a nine-two magus. Also, Moses almost became a master mage, but he actually failed. You can read this through context clues in Genesis. It described him as being only a little less than God, and he has the classic imagery of a mage of the time period and of the end of the region. Damn it! Um, but is described to have failed a trial toward well, the that end because all. the rock splitting the water, hence why even he was not allowed into paradise. Mm -hmm. Or not very good. Plant, sorry. I thought it was because he smashed the, uh, the rock. Ten Commandments. Yeah. Oh, no, oh no, I thought it was because... That happened because he was pissed off because... Yeah, because he was pissed Blur off idiots. at God, and God was like, All right, fucker, well, now you're not going to the Promised Land. I thought it was because he... Yeah, I thought he... I thought it was because, um, like, they were traveling through the desert, and it's like, we need water, so ask God for water. And, Mo and Moses said, hey, can I do this? And he was talking about splitting the rock. And God was like... No, don't do that. But Moses did it anyway. So what he was supposed to do was he was supposed to ask the rock, and instead he hit the rock. Ah, uh, got it. Yeah, I haven't heard the story in a while. In a while. Yeah. Fucking the rock. Um. Don't mess with the rock. Don't mess but, with the rock. You just had to give you the eyebrow. Nicely, <laughs> I think yeah. The, the... The part that was extra shitty about that is God was like, yeah, you're not going to the promised land. I want you to walk to the top of this hill and look at it just so you know what you're missing out on. Mm -hmm. And then go back. Oh, ah! and um, two other figures that also uh, would have fit the description of that guy. Old yeah. Testament God didn't fuck around. <laughs> yeah, no, read the book of Job. You'll that, that book is literally all about how God doesn't fuck around. The you book of Job. Everybody's like, oh, Jesus is loving and forgiving. And he is. Old Testament God didn't fuck around. Yep. Right, do you Damn wonder it. why the Gnostics thought he was evil? 